Hey, gun people. Well, the explosions and bombs in uh, Austin are continuing. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Government has over 500 officers working this case, and they're asking the public for help. Um, they're, they're releasing bits and pieces of information. Um, and again, I'll just go through the bits and pieces I'm reading and kind of discuss why this is happening or why in the investigation, why I think this might be happening. Okay, so as, as usual, whatever you get from the government is always suspicious. You're never going to get the truth. They're always going to withhold more than they tell you. So they're saying this last explosion was possibly triggered by a tripwire and it injured two people on bicycles. Well, let me tell you something about the hood, the ghetto, a cry crime area. Um, people that ride around on bikes are stealing stuff. Uh, if you if you got people riding around on bikes and they don't have a car or driver's license, they're out stealing. Uh, what they're not saying about the victims is their criminal history, what acts they were engaged in, when the bombs went off, how did they become in possession of the box that blew up, uh, where was it addressed, did the person that had it live at the address? Place? They're not saying any of that because obviously that's going to... Uh, Promote the stereotype that people don't want to believe is true. So, uh, two black guys on a bike uh, end up with a package. We don't know how. Government's not telling us how they end up, whether it was dressed in them, where they pick it up. But they're saying it was possibly by a tripwire. Now, they're also not saying, is the tripwire connected when the packages were picked up? Or were they triggered after they moved them? And that would give us some sort of indication on how the device is being triggered. And, it, and all the victims, of course, are being cross-referenced on who who knows. Do they work out at the same gym? Are they, uh, you know, are they connected in any way? I think the first two victims went to the same church. So that would be some sort of connection. Uh, does the person know all the victims? Are the victims random? They're not really telling us that, you know, those details of the case, but... Um, they're, they're releasing a little bits and pieces. So here they're saying uh, the tripwire was activated by someone either handling, kicking, or coming in contact. Now, we don't know if, uh, as they walked or rode their bikes through the area. Well, where were they going? Where were they coming from? Did they live in the area? I mean, there's no investigative reporting. Nobody's asking questions. They just take what the government tells them and stops. Okay? You got two guys out in the middle of the night on bikes where were they going did they live in the area why how do they come in possession of the package was it addressed to them was it in somebody's house was it in the road was it on somebody's doorstep and they went up and stole it well rick we can't say that because they're victims okay well those are just questions that a reasonable thinking person would probably ask and, of course, they're still warning, you know, giving us the safety briefing. Do not handle packages. Do not pick them up. Do not disturb packages. Run, hide, stay in your house. Hey, man, any government great to just give them more taxes if we only had more government. You know, if we only outlawed bombs, this wouldn't be a problem. And the police are urging people within a half-mile radius to stay in their homes, at least till daybreak. Really? We're just going to tell everybody to hide in your house? Because a bomb's already gone off and you guys can't catch them. They've done it four times. And you got 500 officers working on this. And you're not releasing anything to the public except please be scared of packages and let us know. Please help us. That, that's where the 500 officers are getting paid millions. And I'm telling you, it's millions of dollars with their salary, benefits, and time they're working on this. And the only thing they got is we're asking the public for help. But we're not going to tell you what happened. And again, instilling fear so government can have complete control of the area. Uh, let's see. Do not touch any packages or anything that looks like a package. Don't even go near it. Really? So now we just need to run and hide from packages? You see a package, you run? Isn't that stereotyping poor packages? Packages are getting a bad rap. Oh, I mean, are the packages wrapped in white paper or black paper or brown paper? Because color is always important and the liberal agenda. And we had a witness. Ooh, speaking. He described a loud bang. It was not a car or gunshot. It was something terrible. Ooh. 
Witness heard a loud bang. Man, if only guns were outlawed, then we would know it wouldn't be a gun because it would have to be a bomb, but bombs are outlawed and uh, liberal dilemma. And great government's great at giving warnings and telling people to hide. Just got an alert on my phone from Austin. And what did the alert say? Ooh, emergency alert. Austin Police Department, incident in your area. Stay indoors. Call 911 if you need to leave before 10 a.m. Really? you got to call 911 for assistance if you need to leave before 10 a.m.? Wow. Man, it's a good thing we have government. If we only had more government, we could be safe. And when it first came out, of course, they were like, oh, originally suggested it could have been a hate crime. Hate crime is code for white man. White did it. Victims are black and Hispanic. What what are they going to do if the if the suspect turns out to be Muslim or black? And and now all this talk about hate crime and getting a white man will will go down the drain. The the total 115,000 I guess if you have any leads. And the police chief in his briefing said, "We will not be able to send school buses into the neighborhood. Oh, the children. The poor children. Can we get them crying and they miss the bus so we can make this into a bigger hate crime, or or we can blame somebody. Such one-sided reporting. And the police are calling for extra level of vigilance. I guess the regular level, or the increased level, wasn't good enough, so now we need extra level. Man, this government, all this great advice and great information to help us. We have a new extra level of vigilance. Pay attention to any suspicious... Package, device, backpack, anything that looks out of place. Do not approach. Ooh, we should have do not approach signs everywhere. Austin should be printing out new signs. Beware of packages. This is a no package zone. The chief was asked if the bombings were racially motivated. Ooh, such a good question. Wow, media can ask that question. They can't answer any other questions I talked about, but they can ask, was it racially motivated? You know the government is about as incompetent and and useless when this is their strategy to catch a bomber. Manly, the police chief of Austin, ooh, liberal city USA in the middle of stinking Texas, Manly said he hoped the bomber was watching and would reach out to us before anyone else was injured or killed. Really? You want the you want the bomber to call that's your investigative plan? That's why we're, we got 500 officers working and your plan to solve this case is hoping the bomber reaches out to you. Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? So evidently, of course, the, the guy's being praised. Ooh, Banley's invitation to contact authorities could prove fruitful. Well, if we're trying to catch fruit, then maybe that would be a good plan. But you're trying to catch a bomber. So because K- K- Kaczynski... When he was doing his bombing, when they reached out to him, he said, I want my manifesto published. So they're thinking, wait, if we can fool this guy into calling us, if that helped us catch him, maybe this guy is stupid enough to call us. Maybe he'll forget to block his number and the police can have a big break. Maybe he will call from home and the number can be tracked to his residence and that'll be a big break. Maybe he'll use a buddy's phone. Man, such a great plan to solve this case. Here's a great tip from government. They're re- repeating for calls for residents not to handle unexpected packages. So if it's expected, tip to bomber, tip to bomber, call your target and tell them a package is coming so it'll be expected. What the? I mean, really? Good grief. Okay, they don't know what the motive is, and they're saying 500 officers, including federal agents, have conducted 236 interviews and followed up on 435 leads. So these numbers will justify larger budgets, and we need more people. And what these numbers really mean is 236 interviews mean they did a neighborhood canvas. They knocked on doors and said, did you see anything? Okay, thanks. Did you see anything? Okay, thanks. Each one of those is an interview conducted, and their 435 leads ain't no telling what they are. You know, they found a, a, a wrapper from a candy bar, you know, or they found a donut box in an area, so they've been scouring and staking out donut shops trying to see if the box came from there. Come on. Again with the numbers.
Government's always about numbers. 735 calls. We need more officers. We need more taxes so we can hire them. How can we expect to be handled? So you told everybody nothing about the bomb, and you told them to be scared of every package. You didn't give size. You didn't give dimensions. You didn't give whether there was outside, what kind of paper it was wrapped in, what the triggering device was. Is it seen on the outside? Is the, the material that it's being wrapped the same? What does it look like? Is it written in hand? Is it typed? You didn't give any information. You just tell everybody, be scared of all packages. You get 735 calls, and now government's going to say, we need more people. We need more government. That's how people get fooled. So here's another little tip they're trying to. The police chief spoke directly to the bomb maker, warning that the materials being used is extremely dangerous. No shit. He's making bombs and blowing people up. He doesn't know it's dangerous. Thanks for the tip, chief. And could be difficult to keep stabilized. This is where the fear factor comes in. He's trying to get anybody that knows this guy that's doing that that might be keeping quiet to say, this guy's going to blow me up. I better turn him in. Maybe talking to some mom or dad who knows it's their son and they don't want to turn him in. Now they're like, uh-oh, he may blow up the house. We better turn him in. No matter how careful you are, Manley said, oh, the materials used in these devices is an ongoing hazard and danger to children. Ooh, insert crying children here. Families that could be near the bomb maker. Code, turn him in. He might blow you up. He's crazy. Like we already didn't know that he's blowing up people. Good grief. Why aren't they blaming the bomb? Why aren't they calling for legend? Why aren't kids walking out of schools saying we need more bomb regulation and we need more bomb control? Why aren't we following the narrative that we do on guns? Because it's about getting the guns. It's not about what they say it is. All right. I guess we'll end that there. Hopefully you got a little out of this.